Here's the reality. As I talk to many of you guys, the sad thing and the private thing that many of you struggle with is you had men over you who failed you, uncles, fathers, grandfathers, uh, brothers who were older than you that abused you, that exposed you to pornography at such a young age that it messed you up for life. And you are still struggling with how you objectify women and how you look at them. And no man is going to raise their hand right now and tell you about this. But the reality is there are secret things that happened in many men and many women's lives in this room that go back to childhood that still have an effect on them. And what Solomon's doing is he's, he's looking at women with this objective, uh, objectified reality where he's going, man, I see women as something to conquer. I see them only as sex objects. That's his reality. That's what he's living out. Very similar to our culture. If you read uh, the CNN study, The Demise of Guys, what it says is, statistically speaking, most guys now in their late 20s to early 30s would rather sit home, look at porn on the internet and masturbate, rather than go out and have a date with a real flesh and blood woman. They don't know how to talk to them. It's getting to the point where women are starting to go, you know what, I don't want to marry a loser like this. I'm going to have a family on my own through artificial insemination and so on. And so you have all these different countries that are actually, the levels of that are rising. Just single women having kids because they don't want to marry morons who don't know how to talk and simply objectify them. We don't even know the chemical implications to the male brain of internet pornography and we won't know it for decades, but it is affecting how males think and perceive reality. My, um, my friend, he was in the dating scene for a long time and he got out of it because he was married. He recently went through a divorce so he went back into the dating scene. It's been a decade since he's been there and he said, Mark, it's a drastically different picture than when I went. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, basically, we walk into these places as guys, we see these girls, we think they're worth talking to. So the other day I said, I'm gonna go talk to one and my buddies all went, whoa, 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 whoa. Sit down. You don't know. Here's what we do. We know who she is now. We'll get her on Facebook. We'll look her up. And then we'll send her some pictures. I said, what are you talking about? He said, we got some texts now. We'll send them naked pictures of ourselves. That's how this rolls now. And anybody over 30 is going, what? And anybody under 30 doesn't even, doesn't even register as weird. Right? That's why we have apps on our phones. Check them, parents. called Snapchat. All right? Your kids aren't sending pictures on lasagna to their friends that disappear in seven seconds. <laughs> Don't be dumb. This is how people date now. Look at me naked. Now do you want to date me? The demise of a culture starts with the demise of men who had fathers and grandfathers and uncles and older brothers who didn't come through and didn't lead them well. And everyone will feel it. This was Solomon's reality. And then the gospel comes in to a whole bunch of guys in this room that only see women as to be conquered. They only see women as objects. And the gospel comes in. There's this beautiful story in the gospel of Mark where Jesus is sitting around with the disciples and this woman of the night comes in and starts touching him, which is crazy. I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine, like, even, okay, so, like, I'm, you know, one of the pastors of the church, and I'm sitting, and this, this prostitute comes in, all right? You'd probably be like, why is Mark hanging out with the prostitute? And then she's, like, rubbing my feet with her hair, all right? My wife would probably be like, what's up? All right? <laughs> all right, so, so picture this now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so... <laughs> So picture this, like, this is what's going on to Jesus. And they're all like, what's up? And then, and then Jesus looks at these disciples, and you can read the story. It's fascinating. And it's actually not a Mark, it's in Luke. And he says this. He says, do you see this woman? And he's not asking whether they have eyeballs. He's saying, do you see her? Like her, do you see her? Do you see something other than a sex object? Do you see something other than a, than a sinner? Do you see this woman? And the gospel comes in and takes a whole bunch of guys who can't see women anymore and promises to work on your mind, to work on your heart, to make you someone who can see it, man. They're made in the image of God, these women, and I'm gonna see them for women rather than all the other things I see them as. 